<laughs> athletic wear leisure wear someone got clever and called it athleisure i just call it comfy today we're going to sew on some knits and we're going to make some comfy clothes <laughs> i'm kathy and this is sewing tech talk So today we have a giveaway, and the giveaway is this great pack of thread. So every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to wear a pack of thread. So good luck. So today we're going to sew on some leisure wear. Um, I'm going to make a bathing suit. <laughs> what prompted me to do that? Well, my old bathing suit died. The fabric just... It, didn't want to go anymore. I've had this fabric. I picked up this bathing suit fabric. Well, let's just say this bathing suit fabric is old enough to go to college. So it was time. So I cut apart my old bathing suit. It wasn't good anymore. I used it as a pattern to make me a new bathing suit. In fact, I made three. So I'm going to be good for a while. So there's lots of patterns out there for uh, leisure wear, swimsuits, yoga pants. And don't think of it as a athletic wear necessarily, but um, a great nightgown, if you will, or pajamas is a pair of like yoga style pants. You don't get twisted up when you sleep. So think about leisure wear or active wear as something that's just really, really comfy. So we're going to sew on this bathing suit today. I'm going to do the seams on the Celebrate Serger. We're going to do a three thread wide seam on the Celebrate Serger to put the, construct the, um, suit suit together and we're going to put elastic in this in this in the arms eye and in the neck and we're going to actually finish that off either with a cover stitch or on the sewing machine so this is kind of like one of those stories where you can pick where it goes but we're going to all end up at the same place even though we might take two divergent paths to get there let's talk a little bit about the supplies what you need to make some great athleisure wear well, first of all, I have a handout for you. And in the handout, I talk about the different supplies, what kind of patterns you're going to look for, and how you're going to kind of finish that up and, and put it together in, uh, in your project. But let's talk about the supplies. Basically, the first and foremost thing is you're going to get a pattern. And your pattern is going to determine what type of fabric that you get. Knits are as varied as people on the earth. There are um, more stretchy fabrics, less stretchy fabrics. For example, I have this knit, which is just a simple cotton knit. It's not really very stretchy. It only stretches from side to side and not very much. It's a two-way stretch. Now this came out of my bathing suit that I took apart and this is called a power mesh. And it stretches this way and this way, and it has great recovery. It's the kind of fabric you're gonna to use to keep everything held in. So your fabric could be kind of different depending on the project that you're gonna use. For a bathing suit, something with fourth way stretch is really, really important. Now, you're going to actually look for elastic as well. And for the bathing suit I'm going to use, my bathing suit fell apart, but the elastic stayed great. And that's because it had this rubber elastic that's a solid rubber elastic. You can get all kinds of different elastics. For a bathing suit, I'm going to recommend something that's kind of sturdy, something that has great stretch but recovery. This cotton and, and, and polyester elastic is, is nice, but it doesn't have a lot of stretch and it doesn't have a lot of recovery. I like, and oh, here's another one. Here's another elastic. Now this is a lingerie elastic. It's soft on the one side and it would probably work for a bathing suit, but I don't know if it would stand up to the chlorine. So check your hand out. There's lots of different things to look for. Now for a pair of pants, you're gonna want something wide so that's really comfy. So check your hand out for the different types of elastic. Today in the bathing suit, we're gonna use this rubber uh, bathing suit elastic. So that's what we're gonna use. Now for thread, Polyester all-purpose thread is going to be great for just about whatever you're going to create. You can get a thread that's kind of soft. This is a woolly nylon type of thread. It's a uh, soft, soft thread. Works in the bobbin of the sewing machine or in the loopers of the serger. So that's an option. Now we're going to go two different ways when we finish off our 
our, our elastic, our top stitching, we're going to go with a cover stitch on the, on the Baby Lock Triumph. We can also use a twin needle on the sewing machine. So you might either need a twin needle. There are some specialty feet that you can use on the serger to get you that great, great stitch. I have some fray check, which helps that serger stitch uh, not ravel out. That's great. And basically, that's pretty much all you need. Get your fabric cut out. I've always maintained that you can make a pair of knit pants a heck of a lot faster than you can even just wash a pair. So let's do some basic seams on on the side to put our garment together. So this is the Baby Lock Celebrate and it is a self-threading serger. That means that you really don't have to go through all the different areas of the serger to thread it on up. It literally just threads by putting the thread in the threading ports, pushing the lever, and it's going to thread itself, which is great. So I've set it up for a three thread stitch. The three thread stitch on the serger is ideal for active wear or leisure wear because it has a little bit of stretch. So those knits, the seam on the knits, they're really not going to pop or pop open. Remember, when you're sewing something like this, especially a bathing suit, there's only a quarter inch between you and the world. So you want that seam not to pop open and you want it to have a little bit of give. So we're going to use the three thread wide on the Baby Lock Celebrate. Now on my bathing suit, I've done most of the construction already, but the seam on the serger, the Celebrate 3 thread wide seam, looks a little bit like this. And you can see it has a little bit of give to it, which is ideal for this fabric. Now I'm going to sew on this other side. A Serger has a cutting blade, and I can turn that cutting blade on or off as I choose. I'm going to want to trim just a little bit on this seam. Now I've cut out my pattern so that my, my, my seam allowance isn't the 5 eighths of an inch that you sometimes see on patterns. If it was though, I have guides on the machine for me to know exactly how much to trim off when I'm doing that 5 eighths inch seam. This pattern, I, don't, I didn't give myself that much space. So I'm going to sew and cut off just a tiny little bit with the blade. Because the serger has a blade, I generally don't use pins. I generally will use wonder clips to hold that edge. You don't want to cut into a pin because that's not good for the pin and it's not that good for your serger either. So I'm going to get started to sew and the serger has feed ducts that come all the way to the front and back. That's why it's ideal for sewing on knit fabrics. This fabric is a little bit slippery. It has a nice little um, kind of glide to it, a little slip to it, which means that when I'm trying to sew it, it's going to slide all over itself. So those extra long feed dogs are ideal for helping me to control this fabric as it comes under the presser foot. So I'm going to get my fabric started. I'm going to bring it in. The press, the machine has, has feed dogs that come into the front of the foot, so it's going to feed easily. Find my foot control, and I'm going to bring everything up. Now, as I come to the to the uh, wonder clips, of course, I'm going to take them out. Now, on this pattern, it was a little bit of a gather on the one side, around the bust area to give you a little bit extra room. So I've done a basting stitch there just to kind of gather it in. It needs to be a specific weight of gather. Now, if it didn't need to be a specific amount of gathering, I could have used the differential feed on my serger. Remember I said that there's two big sets of feed dogs? Well, they can move independently of each other. So if I had wanted to gather this bottom fabric, and it didn't have to be absolutely precise, I could have engaged the, the differential feed on the side, and it would have pulled more fabric in on the bottom. I want to control that, so I did a preparation of doing a basting stitch on that side. Now there's my seam. With a serger, it looks absolutely professional and it has just enough stretch to it so I know that seam's not going to pop out if I want to dive on in. So that part of my bathing suit is absolutely good to go. Now let's talk about finishing off the edges. 
Now finishing off the edges can be done with or without elastic. Well, not in a bathing suit. In a bathing suit, you really need that elastic to help hold everything up and onto your body. But on a shirt, kind of like the shirt that I'm wearing here, it really just wants to have an elegant little finish. Now I'm going to finish this with a cover stitch or if I have to on a sewing machine with a twin needle. But if I put elastic into even a garment like this, it's going to keep this edge really nice. So let's put some elastic in so that we can, when we finish it off, have that excellent professional finish on the edge. Now on my bathing suit, I'm going to use this type of elastic. Yes, this is the preferred method for storing your elastic in a big old hunk. I've tried to wrap it on something and that just doesn't work. So I'm going to put elastic around the arm. And what you want to do is you want to sew that elastic on. This method, I'm going to use a complete finished edge. So I have my seam on both. It's a nice little circle. And I'm just going to put the elastic all the way around there. There are some times when you can leave that seam open. But with this kind of style of application, you really don't have to. So I'm going to take this, put it right side out so that I can get to everything. Take my elastic and get started sewing it with that same three thread wide stitch that I used, but I'm just sewing the elastic down. I'm going to turn it under in a little bit and finish off that edge. So let's get everything started. So I'm going to get my fabric underneath, lift the presser foot and get it so that is a, the, the fabric is controlled under the foot of the machine. Now let's bring in our elastic. Let's find the end of it. This type of elastic is a real strong one. It's sturdy and it's going to give me that nice crisp edge. Now if I'm making a top like this, I could use a clear elastic that's not quite so sturdy, but it's going to keep that edge nice. The same technique works for both. Get my elastic here. Now I don't necessarily need to trim this elastic, so I'm going to turn the knife off. I'm going to turn the cutting blade off and I'm just going to sew right around that edge. Get everything up and close. Lower the presser foot. Now here's the trick. A lot of people when they're putting the elastic on, they want to kind of stretch it. And if you do stretch it, what you're going to do is you're going to pull in that outside opening. You really don't need that. You're really just putting the elastic in so it holds everything in place. So the trick is going to be to sew it on so it's nice and flat. And I really don't need a very short stitch length. This is really just attaching it. And when I sew it down with that cover stitch or the twin needle, that's what's really going to hold it in place. Now the tendency for a lot of people is to take this elastic and crank on it and pull it. You don't want to do that. You just want to hold it nice and flat against the fabric. Now I'm coming to the shoulder seam and in this this pattern I have a lining on the front. So I have that shoulder seam has the seam of the fabric, the serger seam, seam that I used before, and it has another two fabrics as well. So there's four layers of fabrics there. Now the machine can handle that really, really well. But when it comes up to that, it might need a little help for it to flow through easily. So I generally use a little cocktail stick, a little pusher to kind of give it that extra little help when I'm coming to something bulky. Sometimes you give it a little pull on the back and it helps as well. Now when I come to the very end, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to overlap that elastic just a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because it would be bulky. And then you can just surge off on that edge. Cut the thread. Now let's see what I did. You can see on the right side 
that's that stitch. That's the bottom of that three thread overlock. Here's the back on the elastic. And I just went right along that edge. Now to finish it off, what we're going to do is just turn it under like that and go over it with either a cover stitch or with a twin needle. Look how professional that looks. And that's exactly how it looks when it's worn. It's going to look like you bought this suit right off the rack. So now, I'm not going to use the Celebrate for this next part. I need a cover stitch. The Celebrate is a serger that does an overlock stitch. It doesn't do a cover stitch. You can get a serger that does both, like the Baby Lock Triumph that I'm going to be playing with shortly. Now that serger has a does the cut the overlock just like the celebrate does but it also has another function where it can do that cover stitch and it can even do them at the same time I could also use a twin needle on my sewing machine and we're going to play with that at the very very end as well personally I prefer using the cover stitch on the serger because it controls that edge like I said it has those great feed dogs so let me get set up we're going to move over to the triumph serger and I'm going to show you how we're going to use that cover stitch to stitch it down and most importantly because we're sewing in the round we're going to see how to take that cover stitch and tie it off in the end you're going to want to see that technique so let me get switched over and I'll be right back we move over to the baby lock triumph this is a combination machine it does all the overlock functions that that celebrate did but it also does a cover stitch. So you can get a machine that is a combination machine. I could have sewn the overlock on this machine and converted it over to the cover stitch. You can get a cover stitch machine by itself as well. But I kind of like my Baby Lock Triumph. It does everything that I need. <laughs> I can switch it over really easy. We're going to do the cover stitch. It's going to involve two needles and that cover stitch looper. So you will need three different sources of thread. One spool, no problem. I wound three bobbins from that one spool. So I could use one in each needle and one in the cover stitch looper as well. Even if you're using a twin needle, you're going to need three spools anyway. This machine comes with a really nice bit presser foot. Optional feet are available and sometimes they can really help you sew. For the Baby Lock Triumph, you could use a cover stitch foot which is the foot that's just a little bit smaller profile and it works great for the cover stitch. You could use a clear foot. It's a great foot. I even made a mark with a Sharpie to show me exactly where the edge of that fabric needs to be. Both great feet. My favorite one, however, and I use this one mostly for my general sewing. This is a great foot. I've put on my open toe foot because it has a red mark for where all of the needle positions are. And I can see the fabric right before it hits the needle. I love the open toe foot for my Baby Lock Triumph serger. That's the one I'm gonna use. So let's move everything aside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch that opening we just stitched. We're gonna stitch everything down. Notice how it lays nice and flat. It still has stretch, but it didn't pull everything in. So let's bring this on up and under the needle. And I can see exactly where I want that edge to be with this open toe foot. I can see that there's the edge that's right along the edge of the elastic. And I'm going to sew so it's right under that little red mark. And I'm going to get a perfect placement. It's going to look like excellent top stitching. Now the same thing is true. When I come to this bulky seam at the side, the machine's going to handle the thickness. But what happens is it gets a little bit caught when it comes on through. I can lower the pressure because this machine has the ability for me to lower the pressure on the foot, which will help it. But because I have that open toe foot, I have my little pusher right here and I can really help it go so I don't get a big stitch when it finally goes under that foot. See how easy that was? Now we're sewing in the round. When I put that elastic on, I could have I just surged right off the edge and I hide it, hid that tail. I can't do that here. So there's an absolute trick when I come to the end. Let me hurry up and get to the end and I'll show you that. And I've written it all up in your notes because it is so slick once you know how to do it.
Okay, now what we're doing is we're coming to where we started to sew. The cover stitch is just like a chain stitch. That's the stitch just like on the top of a bag of dog food or bulk food. And you know you pull that one magic thread and everything comes open. Well the same can happen to the stitch. But there's a way to stop that from happening. And what we need to do is take these top threads and take them to the back. Now on this stitch, that only happens on the very end. When you finish sewing, not where you start. So when I'm coming around, I'm just going to simply clip these threads because they're not going to ravel anyway. So I'm cutting the one on the bottom as well. So far, so good. Now when I come up here, I have my open toe foot and I can make sure that I'm going just a few stitches over the top of that and I'm going to hit that exact spot because I can see it when I'm coming up to it. Now I've gone two or three stitches over the top. Here's the technique to keep those threads from raveling and pulling them off to the back. It's written up in your handout so don't worry if you miss a step. I'm going to take my needles to the highest most position and I'm going to raise my presser foot. I'm going to take some stick, something just like this, go under the foot, under the needles and pull those two threads right to the front. Got it? Now I'm going to take them and I'm going to grab those loops and just give those loops a haircut. Let's cut them. So far so good. Now I'm going to pull the fabric back and away so it clears those feed dogs and I'm just going to snap it just like that and that pulls those threads automatically to the back. The last thing to cut is that little cover stitch looper thread. I take these, I tie them into a couple of overhand knots or maybe a square knot and that's not going to come out. So that's a pretty cool technique. Now the way we finish this elastic along the edge, we just top stitch pretty close. Look at how professional that looks. If you're doing the waistband of a pair of pants, it's not that much different. It's just that the fabric is wider. So here's the waistband on these funky pair of pants that I made. You can see there's that cover stitch, there's the elastic coming right along the edge, and here's the back. And it holds everything down really easy, and this elastic is not going to roll. So, great finish there. Serger is my preferred finish for the very bottom when I'm doing that hem on a pair on a knit. So here's the bottom of the pair of pants. Now the elastic, there's no elastic in here. It's just turned up and stitched over, but you can see how professional that finish looks. So a cover stitch machine really gives you a lot of options. I prefer the cover stitch for finishing off my knits. You can do it on a sewing machine. On a sewing machine you would use a twin needle. You still need those three threads. We're going to go over to the Presto and I'm going to show you that really really fast. But I really do like the cover stitch machine. I get it. Maybe you don't have a cover stitch machine yet. You have to do it on your sewing machine. I understand but phew, cover stitch going to be a great way to go. Let's head over to the Presto and I'll show you really quick how you can stitch that down with a twin needle and then you're ready to sew some activewear. So we're going to finish out on the Presto 2. Now the Presto 2 is a regular sewing machine. Remember the sewing machine is your very first commitment, your very first pur purchase, but with a twin needle you can sort of kind of get a uh, something that's kind of like a cover hem. Let me show you what that looks like. I thought you might like to see it on a piece of muslin before I stitch it on my on my um, on my bathing suit. So here's the two. There's a twin needle and there's the cover stitch. Now let's look at the back. That's where the real difference is. So the twin needle does do sort of a cover and if this was a stretchable fabric it would stretch. The cover stitch a lot more covery and that's why I prefer that machine it, even though uh, the sewing machine can sort of do it. So cover stitch is the bomb. So have the twin needle in. When you're threading up for a twin needle you just have to have those two separate threads coming on in. They travel as one when you're threading the machine. You split them at the needle. This machine comes with a twin needle and it comes with a fairly narrow one. I however have put in a 4.0 which is a wider distance between and it gives me the look that I want just a little bit better for sewing my, my sewing machine edge down, my uh, 
swimsuit edge down. Do it pretty much just like the other one. I'm going to take that, fold it under, put it under the presser foot, and I'm just going to stitch, and it's going to stitch those two lines and give me that back and forth on the back. Now when I'm using a twin needle, I can't use my needle threader, and I generally don't use my cutter either. So I'm going to take this out so that you can see it. So there it is. Not much difference on the front between the serger and the sewing machine. On the back, it just doesn't cover quite as well. So you can use a sewing machine. I really like to be able to use my serger for both the overlock functions and the cover stitch functions. So I bet George has a great deal for you one any machine that you pretty much have to get. So I'm going to send it over to George. I'm going to finish up my swimming suit because I'm hot. I want to go swimming. So take it away, George. Tell them all about the deals they can get on any machine that they want. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download the outline for today's presentation. Now, the BabyLock Presto 2 is one of our most popular machines. It offers high quality features at a very affordable price. The seven point feed system really handles the fabric from denim to sheer, even elastic. Plus it's so easy to access all 100 of these stitches. These stitches are quilting stitches, satin stitches, decorative utility stitches. It even has seven one-step buttonholes as well as built-in alphabets. So you see this has plenty of features, but wait, there's more. For the first few that orders, you'll get this bonus that includes a set of rose gold scissors, all kinds of class A needles, and some different thread, both utility and decorative thread. This has a value well over $150, and it's included free while supplies last. You know, a serger can truly cut your sewing time by half and give you a much more efficient and better quality stitch. The problem is, Many sergers are difficult to use. The Baby Lock Celebrate has their original air threading feature where it threads both upper and lower loopers with a burst of air. Plus, it even threads both needles. This serger instantly can change to a rolled edge just by a turn of the dial and you get a beautiful finished rolled edge. It also works with a wide variety of decorative threads for doing a two thread overlock with a thick thread or even this special serger crochet technique that baby lock can do beautifully and this is shown with again thicker threads. Because it's easy to use you'll do more things like this. It also has a differential feed. Not only, only can you use this for gathering, but it gives you control on heavy fabric, on stretchy fabric with elastic, on sheer fabric perfectly. Now the Baby Lock Celebrate is available at a very special buy right now, but this is only while supplies last, so don't wait. Click on the link here. Call us at 1-800-865-9664. At Moore's, we carry the full line of Baby Lock sergers from the most basic Baby Lock Vibrant, which offers an incredible quality serger, of course, to celebrate, as well as the popular Victory, Acclaim, and even the top model, Baby Lock Triumph 8 thread serger that threads not only the loopers but all the needles with a burst of air and can do up to eight threads in combination as well as the cover hem. And this is an amazing product. Speaking of cover hem machine, the cover stitch on the Euphoria is so amazing where you can sew stretchy knit and active wear and it gives you a flexible seam, but this also has automatic thread delivery so there's no tension adjustments. But let us help you decide on the right serger. Give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and I'll have an experienced staff member go through the different features of the sergers, discuss what your interests are, and guide you through that serger purchase. Again, that's 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.